Hello everyone and welcome to my 100 plus tips and tricks video. Hopefully there will be something in this list that helps you in game or perhaps you know someone who is just starting the game. This video would be a great help to them. So let's get into this. Did you know that you can claim one free rename per account for Star Wars The Old Republic? Simply go to the website, go to this section right here, claim your free character rename and it will then be sent to you in game via the mail. If you don't want to subscribe to the game just yet, but you want to lift some restrictions, then simply buying some cartel coins will move your account into what we call preferred status. This will automatically increase some of your restrictions, such as giving you a better credit cap and an extra crew skill to use. A quick tip when creating a new character is to not claim all of the mail that is sat there waiting for you in the mailbox. You can actually leave this here for a really, really, really long time. So you may as well just leave it there until you're ready to take it out. There is a common bug with AMD graphics cards with the anti-aliasing in the game. You can tell if you get this because you will have severe lines around the minimap and your quick bars. So if you have an AMD graphics card and you think you're getting this bug, the way to fix it is to go into your preferences, find your graphics, and then set your anti-aliasing just like mine to medium or off. To enable cooldown timers in-game, go ahead and navigate to your preferences menu, then go to the user interface tab. Scroll down until you find show cooldown text and check the box, press apply, press ok, and you will find that cooldown timers are now enabled on your character. You may have noticed that most of the windows in Star Wars The Old Republic cannot be moved around. To be able to move them around, simply press escape, go into your interface editor. On this main interface editor window, you just need to simply check this box here, enable movable secondary window. This will not only allow you to move windows around, but it will also allow you to stack them on top of each other. You can double tap your AOE ability to automatically place it on your target. To have your health show up as a number and percentage, simply navigate to your interface editor, highlight your player frame, scroll down in the additional options, and click on show information text. This will enable the overlay. Some equipment in the game can be modified, such as lightsabers. To get a better understanding of what you're looking at, you can go into your preferences. Once again, click on the user interface tab, scroll down until you find the tooltip segment, and then simply enable show detailed item tooltips. This will allow you to see what is inside of your modifications without needing to open the actual modification window. Did you know that you can equip almost any type of gear inside of the Outfitter? You only need to obey the level requirement and the alignment requirement and any class requirements. So if you're playing on a character that might use heavy armor, you could still use light armor, for example, in the Outfitter. Don't be afraid to mix and match. Pressing the forward slash key just to the right of the number lock key on your keyboard will toggle the walk feature for your character. Did you know that you can change the size of the text in the chat box? You simply right click on the tab at the top of the chat box and hover over font size and then simply choose your desired font size. Did you know that there are actually more chat settings that you can fiddle with such as color? If you actually go to the chat settings after right clicking on the tab at the top there again, you can change the individual types of colors for the individual different types of chats. Did you also know that by typing slash C join into your chat box and then following that up with your custom chat channel name, such as Sotar Central, this will create a custom text channel, much like a guild text channel or group text channel that you can chat with, with anybody that you want to join. It can be almost like a secret club text chat. Did you know that after typing into the chat, if you need to repeat your message, you can simply just press up after entering the chat again to repeat the message that you previously displayed. The shortcut to reply to somebody's whisper is the R key on your keyboard. So if somebody whispers you, simply by pressing R, the chat box will automatically fill out the details to whisper that person back. Did you know that if you type slash E into the text channel, followed by any kind of RP desired emote that you might think of. Again, we'll insert this in an RP-like fashion. Did you know that you can visit any one of your class trainers 
and then when interacting with them, using the drop down menu at the top, you can select to see all abilities, which will then show you every ability that you will obtain on your current combat style. It will also show you exactly what level you get the ability at. You can enable an FPS counter in game by holding down Control, Shift, F. If you go into your preferences menu and then into the graphics tab and change your game into full screen windowed, this will prevent the game from giving you a loading screen if you ever need to tab out. You might have noticed already if you are using full screen mode. Whenever you tab away from the game, you are met with a loading screen when you return to the game. Full screen windowed will stop this for you. If you ever receive any kind of user interface bug, you can hold down the left control key and press the letter U twice. This should fix any bugs that the interface has on you. Some people are unfamiliar with the term global cooldown. I'll quickly explain it for you now. A global cooldown is basically the amount of time that you have to wait between using different abilities. For example, some abilities, when you use them, they are instant, such as the Blade Barrage. However, other abilities will respect the global cooldown. As you can see, when the bar over the quick bar fully replenishes, you're able to use the next ability. Pressing the print screen button on your keyboard will take a screenshot of literally whatever is on your screen right now. Star Wars The Old Republic will save this screenshot for you to this folder on screen. You can press escape at any time on your keyboard during a conversation to immediately back out. So if you made a mistake during your dialogue choices, you can go back in and do it again. You can actually also press escape to skip some cutscenes in certain situations, such as when loading into your flagship. You can actually find an appearance modification station in the Kato Bazaar on the fleet. This is the North Elevator on the Republic fleet and the South Elevator on the Imperial fleet. As you can see, this here is the appearance modification station. It will charge you cartel coins to change anything here. Did you know that your rocket boost can actually be used while in stealth? Give it a go, it's handy for getting around quickly. Story missions basically yield the highest XP while leveling in this game, especially considering it gives you the most XP boosts. So if you're looking to level up quickly, I would consider just focusing on your current story quest. If you prefer to be able to see which dialogue options are going to give you dark side points or light side points, then go ahead to your preferences, then go to the user interface tab, and then right here in the conversation segment you can see show conversation alignment gain on mouse over. This should be enabled by default. The one you want to enable is show conversation alignment gain, then press apply, then press ok. Then during conversations you will always see which option gives you the alignment. Did you know that you can actually download and use other people's interfaces? For example, if you like the look of this user interface that I'm using here, then you can actually download that. You just simply need to go to the link in the description, download the file, then navigate to your Star Wars The Old Republic folder as seen on screen now, and then you need to copy and paste what you downloaded into your GUI profiles folder. You'll then see it listed as an option for you to use in game. You don't even need to close the game to do this, you can do it while it's open. You can actually do the same thing with keybinds. You could download my keybinds if you wanted to or someone else's, although I don't always recommend doing that. Did you know that you can hide your user interface in game for better looking screenshots by pressing this combination of keys? If you are using the Bioware launcher and not the Steam launcher for Star Wars The Old Republic and you often find yourself having issues with the reorganizing data segment of your patch installs, the next time try this fix. While patching, go to your task manager, go into the processes tab, find the launcher, right click on the launcher, click on set affinity, then uncheck every single one of the boxes except the first box, then press OK and then immediately go back into where you just was and recheck all the boxes. You might find that this will help the reorganizing data segment move its way along. If you're playing Star Wars The Old Republic through Steam and you want to be able to purchase through Steam, then you need to link your account to Star Wars The Old Republic. To do this, go to the Star Wars The Old Republic website, then go to the My Account section and then look for the Steam Link tab. If you're finding that you really need some extra performance in the game, then make sure that you downloaded the dx 90 files. Not all operating systems will give you these files automatically, and the game definitely benefits from having them on your system. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can download these DirectX files. 
Installing Star Wars The Old Republic on an SSD, which is a solid state drive, versus a typical mechanical hard drive is quite drastic. Installing it on the SSD will have much better load times and better loading into dialogue times. It won't necessarily improve game performance, but loading times will be improved monumentally. For a game that has a lot of different instances and loading between planets, I think you'll find that having this game on an SSD is very beneficial. There is a slight misconception that lowering your graphics in this game will actually give you better performance. Now typically this is true if you're using a system that might not be able to handle the maximum graphics settings. However, Star Wars The Old Republic is a 10 year old game and quite a lot of modern systems don't really struggle to run this game graphically. So I just wanted to show you this quick example side by side between maximum and minimum. If you are finding that you are lagging of course, then I do suggest that you turn down the settings. This next tip goes hand in hand with your graphics card. Please don't do this if you don't feel comfortable messing with the clocks or frequencies of your actual graphics card. If you know how to do so, then forcing a new minimum frequency for your graphics card will actually improve performance in Star Wars The Old Republic quite a lot. The main problem when it comes to utilising your graphics card is that this game will often dip down to about 2% or 3% usage of your GPU. This is purely due to bad optimization between drivers and the game engine. This is likely to probably never be fixed, however what you can do yourself is increase the minimum clock speed while you're playing a game. You can put this to a safe speed within the threshold of your actual average clock speed to stop your graphics card from thinking that it needs to clock itself downward, because that's what's actually happening. Did you know that you can instantly heal your companion by simply dismissing them and then summoning them. It's quite a quick process. You can do it even quicker just by mounting and then getting off the amount. Did you know that you can move around by simply holding the left click and right click together at the same time? I'm assuming you probably did know how to do this. However, I just wanted to suggest to you that you should probably use this more often as it's much easier later on when you get more abilities and you eventually use keybinds. Did you know that you can mount up while moving? You can actually buy this perk within your legacy. Simply press Y to open up your legacy. Within the other tab, you want to be looking within the convenience section, and then it's this perk right here, improved mounting. It will cost you 400 cartel coins to unlock this. This is cheaper than the amount they give you with your monthly sub. Did you know you can actually get damage meters in Star Wars The Old Republic? There is an application called Star Pass which will read the damage logs. I have a video guide on it which I will link in the description. Did you know that there is a training dummy on both Republic and the Imperial Fleet? On the Republic Fleet, go to the Gav Daragon bridge deck. On the Imperial Fleet, go to the Zyos Shadow bridge deck. There you will find a training dummy so that you can practice. There is a skill mentor on your fleet within the combat section. Talking to this person will allow you to respec your character into a different discipline path. If you don't want to have to visit the vendor, then you can unlock field respec within your legacy. Simply press Y, then go into your character perks, scroll down to convenience, and then you can see it's the bottom option right here, field respecialization. It'll cost you 200,000 credits to unlock. From here, you'll be able to go straight to your combat style and change your discipline whenever you want. I've seen a lot of people asking how they can use the counterpart faction on their current combat style. So for example, people who are currently on the Republic faction who want to play as a Sith Juggernaut as their secondary combat style. Well, all you need to do to be able to do this is to have the light five achievement for the light side and the dark five achievement for the dark side. Press Y to open your legacy, then go into the other tab and then look in the alignment category right here. If you have both of these achievements, then you will be able to choose any particular type of faction-based combat style on any of your classes. By navigating to this folder that you can see on screen, you can actually change the max camera distance in game. Open up the text file, which is your name, followed by the word account. Don't mistake it for the account dev. You're looking for the one that just has your account name, then the word account afterwards. Open up that file. Scroll down until you find max camera distance. Change the number value, which should be 25.0. Change that to 100.0 or 125.0 for a bit more. Then when you come back in game, you'll be able to see that your camera can now be zoomed out much further than before.
Did you know that you can change your loading screen in the game? Simply navigate to this folder on screen, find any picture that you want to use for your loading screen, however it must be a .jpeg for this to work properly. Go ahead and drag and drop your new picture into this folder, and then change the name of your chosen picture to the exact name that the current loading screen uses. You will need to delete the old loading screen image before you do this. This is so the game can recognise it as the loading screen. Did you know that by pressing Ctrl and C together, this will open up your collections window. The collections is a feature in the game which allows you to unlock different cartel market items account wide. For example, if you recently unlocked a mount that you really like and you want to use it on different characters, you can come over to the mounts category simply find the mount that you unlocked. For example, I've unlocked this Zerka CR17 Incendia Speeder. I could click on it, click on the collection button right here, and then it will offer me to pay 400 cartel coins, which will unlock this mount across my entire account. You can do this with any cartel market item. If you want to get to your personal starship quickly, you don't have to use your class dedicated elevator on the fleet. You can actually go through any of these elevators without any problems. And then to quickly get to your starship, use the console that is to the right here. This is literally to the right on every single elevator. When you click on it, you can go and straight into your ship. Did you know that within your legacy, you're able to buy specific unlocks that will quick travel you to your personal starship? You can unlock this for around 50,000 credits. This will obviously get you to your ship very quickly. Did you know that you can open your galaxy map at literally any time by pressing shift plus M? You can quickly navigate to anywhere around the galaxy by doing this. You can actually gather from any collecting node now on any planet regardless of your crew skill level. Some people still don't know this so I'm getting it out there. If your guild owns a flagship, then you will be able to obtain a rank from your guild leader which allows you to summon people to your current location. You can buy a flagship from this section of the fleet. They're pretty expensive though. You may have seen the COD option inside of your in-game mail when sending something to somebody. This is the credits on delivery option. This allows you to send an item to another player, requesting them to pay a fee before they can take the item out. This is a good way to do trades with other players if you can't meet up in-game. There is a return to sender shortcut at the top right of your mail if you ever need to send something back that might have been accidentally sent to you. When searching through the GTN, you can actually press shift and left click on any of your items to be able to just imprint that straight into the search. You can do the same thing with your chat box by simply pressing enter to open up your chat box first, then linking the item in by pressing left shift and left click at the same time on the item. You can enlarge your debuff scale by going into your interface editor, then click on your player debuff tray and then click on the option here where it says scale and drag it across to make it bigger. This will help you see if you have any negative effects on your character. If you don't think you have as many quick bars as what you think you should have, then it's probably because the quick bar is currently disabled. By opening up your interface editor and then looking around on screen, if you see any red bars like this one, it means that it's disabled. Simply click on it and then in the options in the middle of the screen, enable the box here. This will bring the quick bar to life for you and you can use it. By pressing together left alt and F while targeting an enemy will automatically bring up your focus target. This is a good way to keep track of somebody in PvP if you need to heal them or possibly protect them or this is a good way to keep track of the boss's health in a raid. To change your key bindings in game, simply go ahead to your preferences menu and then at the bottom of this you will see some more menus. You will see key bindings is the next tab along and different segments here to change different key binds. The second one down quick bar is probably the one you're looking for. Make sure that you match the correct quick bar to the correct key bind. By opening the interface editor at the same time you can see exactly which quick bars you're dealing with as they are labelled. To get your first ever stronghold, Make sure you get this mission here from this hollow on the fleet. By looking on the map, you can find the strongholds and decorations section. The Drummond cars or Coruscant stronghold are the cheapest to obtain. And I recommend you do this as quick as possible as a stronghold is very convenient to you as a player. 
it's a pretty good tip to make sure that you're using Warzone Adrenals and Med Packs as you get these for free for completing PvP dailies and weeklies. You can also buy them for pretty cheap from the PvP vendors. Don't underestimate how useful they can be in PvP. Okay folks, I thought it would be a good idea to at least shout out a couple of people who create Star Wars The Old Republic content as a tip, as there are other people out there who have some really good things to share with you, such as Noble Plays, there will be a link to his channel in the description, not forgetting about Peter who streams on Twitch, and also people like Kranaturka who do Let's Play Star Wars The Old Republic videos which are very entertaining. I also wanted to take a moment just to make sure that everybody is aware that we have a Discord server and one of the best ways to get tips about this game and any help in general is to join that server so there will also be a link to that in the description. Companion customizations can actually be bought across various planets. Make sure you look out for these in your landing zones, such as Taris offers different companion customizations to purchase. You may have noticed a white bar that sometimes pops up above people's heads in PvP. We call this the resolve bar. When the resolve bar is filled, it means that you cannot stun or immobilize or knock back or root the other player. This mechanic was placed into the game to stop players from just stunning each other constantly. When the resolve bar is full, we commonly refer to this as being white barred. Did you know that you can find specialty vendors on basically each planet which will offer you some kind of unique looking gear? It could be what you're going for so make sure you're looking for them. Did you know that you can get some pretty unique looking mounts called the Aratec vehicles? There are some quest lines that you can pick up on your fleet which will reward you with these vehicles. Make sure you pick them up as soon as possible as the progress may take you a little while. Did you know that you can sometimes see a unique execution animation? when using your most basic ability to finish an opponent that's nearly dead. Did you know that you can use the force push on a juggernaut slash guardian or the knockback from a sniper or gunslinger to get to cool places in the game? We commonly do this on the channel so make sure you subscribe if you want to see cool stuff like that. After unlocking a decoration for yourself you can then unlock it for your guild afterwards. If this is something you want to do, simply preview the decoration before you use it, then use the decoration to redeem it, and then in the decoration preview window, you will see the option to unlock this for your guild. Did you know that you can actually change the hook layout within your stronghold? So if a certain layout isn't working for you, then make sure you change the layout by clicking on the different tabs in the edit mode. If you don't like how nameplates can scale to be really large on your screen, then go ahead and navigate to your preferences menu, then go ahead to the nameplates segment, and then check the box that says scale nameplates with distance. This will keep nameplates at a relatively reasonable size even while far away. You can actually toggle which nameplates you want to see by going into the same menu once again. As you can see, you can put nameplates on yourself or even take them away from yourself. Did you know that within your legacy, you can buy tactical markers that can help you explain different strategies or where different roles need to be during an encounter? Simply go into your legacy, go into the other unlock, and then on the convenience side, you will see tactical markers here. It's available to all your characters once you've unlocked it. Did you know that in the character packs of your legacy, in the advancement tab, you can actually increase the XP yield for different types of content? Filling out each row will increase your XP yield by 30% in that type of content. I suggest doing this for things like flashpoints and story missions. These XP boosts also stack with normal XP boosts that you use along your way while leveling. Did you know that the Cartel Bazaar actually offers you some really unique cool looking stuff? You can even buy things like the Black Die module from here. Don't forget that reskins are quite common in this game, so if you're looking for a particular armor set, it's usually a good idea to see if it's been reskinned first, because the reskinned version might be much cheaper than the original version, and then you can just dye it to match. It's always a really good idea to research your rotation. A rotation is a sequence in which you can use your abilities to get the most out of your current combat style. For example, if you're currently playing something like a Carnage Marauder, then go to Google and type in Star Wars The Old Republic Carnage Marauder Build Guide. You will find something useful. Did you know that while doing your achievements for killing certain types of mobs on planets, you can do this while in a group? It makes it much faster and much more efficient. 
It's always good to tell people that companion gifts always sell well, because this is true and has been consistently true throughout the game's life. So if you're struggling to make credits, then you should really consider selling up all of your companion gifts. You're probably going to make a decent amount of money. There is a crew skills vendor on your fleet. Make sure you buy your crew skill materials from this vendor and not the GTN. As what you'll find is what players do is they buy the materials from this vendor and then sell them to you at a higher price on the GTN. Don't be fooled, buy them from the vendor. Alliance crates are something that will be dropped to you after starting your Alliance storyline in Star Wars The Old Republic. These drops come from Heroics and are still pretty useful for obtaining companion gifts and legacy gear. Despite common belief, Heroics are actually still a pretty good way to make credits. So if you like playing Heroics and doing the dailies and weeklies and that type of thing, then you'll find yourself earning in a lot of credits at the same time, especially if you do the bonus missions as well with a full group. While we're talking about credits, slicing is always the go-to for crew skills if you want to make credits, as those purple materials in slicing are usually the ones that are in highest demand. Did you know that your loadout will also save the location of all the abilities on your quick bar? Make sure you keep this in mind when making your new loadouts. When you hit max level, some of the easier content will bolster your stats when you enter it. What this means is, is when you enter things like regular war zones or story mode flashpoints, or even veteran mode flashpoints, and especially story mode operations, the game is bolstering your stats to be competitive to the content that you're currently playing. If you're wondering how to set the difficulty of an operation, then you simply just need to be within an operations group, right click your portrait frame and then hover over the options and set the difficulty as appropriate. Not many people know what to do with their cartel coins from their monthly subscription. What I always suggest doing is buying your quick bars because the moment your subscription runs out you're going to lose two quick bars. So if you're used to having six make sure you buy the unlock so that you can unlock your two extra quick bars when your subscription runs out. You can also do this for some other unlocks, such as Hide Head Slot and Unify Colors. Strongholds are by far one of the best ways to move around the galaxy. It's an instant teleportation for any of your characters, and you can even quickly get to your ship or the previously known location you was at. So some people think that the use of ability in this game is quite slow, and they want to be able to queue up their abilities a little bit more responsively. Do so, go into your preferences, and then go into the controls tab. From here, you will scroll down and you will see the ability action queue window. By making this shorter than what it usually is, which I think is 0.75, you will find that it's a little bit more responsive when pressing on your abilities. Did you know that you can actually use reshade with Star Wars The Old Republic? Not everybody uses this, but if your PC can handle it and you want to make the graphics look a bit nicer, then it's an option to you. Did you know that you can queue for a war zone quickly simply by right clicking on the icon and pressing Q unranked? So if you're just starting playing with a friend and you both chose the same story, then that's fine. Don't worry, you can enter each other's phases and progress the story so long as you're on different missions. However, you will need to enable an option, so make sure that you go into your preferences menu and then go down to the social segment and then you want to check this box here allow access to same class and personal phases. If you transfer one of your characters to another server, then you can actually transfer your legacy progress with you. Just make sure that you already have a legacy created on your new destination server before you transfer your new character there. When your character is transferred, all of your legacy progress will be merged. Did you know that we're actually working on an Operation Guides playlist? I'll leave a link to that in the description below, so if you want to check out Operations, they will be really useful to you. Something to consider before your subscription runs out is to deposit your credits into your Legacy Bit. This will stop your credits from being consumed into your credit escrow. Make sure you visit the supply section of your fleet very often in between levels, as this is where you're going to find new and efficient gear to help you along your way. Did you know that the bloom option in graphics actually affects lightsabers more than what you might think? Some people prefer to turn it off, some people prefer to keep it on. I'll leave that up to you. Dailies and weeklies work differently in the game now. For example, a daily will reset your progress if you don't complete it. A weekly will also reset your progress if you don't complete that. 
Did you know that you can access your crafting materials from any character? Your stash is accessible from all of your characters so that you can simply craft easily. Okay, the final tip that I've got for you all is to subscribe to this YouTube channel because we have a ton of guides for you to check out. We're always covering Swear Tour news. I think that you're going to benefit from it, honestly. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video. We would really appreciate it if you would consider liking the video and subscribing. We're aiming to hit 40k by the end of this year and I think we can smash it. Stay safe, stay awesome, peace.